Check in with Blaine Herman, our senior reporter down in Durban. Blaine has been following the South African Women's Open, that's of course Golf Championship. Let's join in the conversation where he speaks to some, well, big hitters of the game. Thank you very much. Yes, we're talking all things golf this evening and in particular the 2017 South African Women's Open. But believe me, we have the cream of the crop present here at the San Lamia Country Club on the KwaZulu-Natal South Coast. So let's chat to a few of them. South Africa's top-ranked golfer, Liat Pace, as well as the former Ladies European Tour champion, Anlise Khaudal. Thank you very much indeed for your time, ladies. And if I may start with you. Coming to a tournament like this, with the prospect of making history, in fact, becoming the first player to win uh, the South African Women's Open for three times, what sort of approach do you take? Do these records mean anything to you? Do you get excited when you hear about these records? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, one of the reasons I am back here, uh, to support the tour. And obviously, stats is huge for me. So uh, it's very important for me to make history or to try to make history. So yeah, I have an approach mm -hmm. like that. Approaching a, a tournament of this magnitude, tell us about the pressure that a player of your stature goes under. I wouldn't call it pressure, I would call it excitement. It's really nice to be in South Africa um, and to play with my peers here. I think it's amazing that everybody's come back to support the tour as well. It's definitely growing and um, yeah, the Sunshine Ladies Tour is growing, which is uh, you know one of our goals. Mm. Anlise, the Sunshine Ladies Tour, a priority for you, would you say? Yeah, I mean, um, it's nice uh, for me to come here to, to practice and, and to get ready uh, for the season in Europe. Um, so uh, it's very nice to, to come and play here. Yeah, you had a bit of a rough uh, 2016, isn't it? Losing your caddy, uh, Max Zechman. Uh, how did that impact your, your 2016 play? Um, yeah, it wasn't, uh, wasn't very easy. I had a tough year also because I was injured, so the beginning of the year was uh, quite difficult. Uh, and then um, I was uh, looking forward to, to play uh, in Dubai because uh, my game was really good. And, um, and yeah, it's, um, it was um, just a big shock and, I c and after that I couldn't really focus on the golf course. I keep, I keep played because uh, I, I thought it was, uh, it was good to play for, for him. Uh, but uh, it was uh, very hard. I wasn't very focused on golf after that. Mm. But now as a pro, how do you put something like that behind you and, and approach a tournament like this? Well, luckily I'm, uh, I've got my family around and, and my friends and they support me all the time. And um, I, talk quite, uh, I, I talked about quite easily. Uh, I think it's important. And, uh, but now, uh, yeah, yeah, you have to move on and, and I have to, to focus on my, my golf now. Mm. Lien, how was uh, 2016 for you? Not bad. Um, Stats-wise, my best year ever. I, I uh, reached my goals. Um, further in driving distance, more greens. Uh, unfortunately, the putts didn't drop last year, uh, but nearly won early on in the year and, and finished top 40, I believe, on, mm -hmm. the, on the ranking. And so far this year? So far, it's been a slow start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> last week, I, I didn't uh, finish very well the last day, but uh, you know, it's the first week back and it, it's, it was our warm up tournament, so hopefully, I can defend this week. Uh, Annelise, when we look at women's golf in general worldwide, would you say there's a resurgence or is, it, is there still more work to be done to, to bring more women into the fold to compete? at the, the ultimate level? I think, um, yeah, I mean, uh, every country is struggling uh, with women golf and it's, uh, it's difficult to, to improve that. Um, so we need more, more media, more people to, to watch uh, women's golf and it's not, uh, it's not easy. So I think um, that's why it's good to, to play uh, these tournaments and, and to have a different tool like that in each, uh, each uh, country. It would be mm -hmm. nice to, to have that. So, um, yeah, hopefully uh, it can change uh, soon. Leanne, what does the Sunshine Ladies Tour do for golf in South Africa? I think it just closes the gap. Um, you know, previously amateurs had to go over, if you turn pro, you had to go over straight to the European Tour or the LPGA. There was no platform to play on to, to grow. And I think it's just growing our players and making, making everybody stronger for Q School. Mm -hmm. um, and also just to perform on other tours. In terms of the rising talent that you've seen, who catches your eye? Well, obviously, Carrie last week beat me. Um, she played amazing golf, really good talent. I believe she's playing uh, on the Korean tour as well. Um, so she'll develop nicely there. Um, you know, all the, all the youngsters coming up. Uh, Lejean is playing really well. Um, and then 
you know, the oldies, mm -hmm. Ashley, Stacy, always there competing hard. Nicole Garcia is playing really nice golf. So, yeah, we've got really good talent. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lee's on the world stage. Who are you keeping your eye on in terms of rising stars? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm more looking at the um, European player who perform in, in, uh, in America. Um, or Leanne, because um, uh, uh, I used to well, I used to play with them in Europe and beat them also mm -hmm. sometimes. So <laughs> it's nice to, to look at them, the like the European player at the top. Yeah. Leanne, women yeah. in golf, uh, they play a major part in terms of socially as well as economically. Here in South Africa, what do you think needs to be done more in order to give them more recognition? Well, I think what's happening at the moment, like the Sunshine Tour, it, it is growing, it's growing every single year. The chase to the Investor Cup is getting bigger and bigger, so we are getting more exposure. Um, businesses are more interested in spending money in women's golf because uh, they're getting something out of it. So I think we're heading in the right direction, but like Annalise said earlier, more media, media exposure is obviously uh, the key for them. Mm. What about grassroots level? Is there enough program to unearth talent? I believe so. I mean, the, the amateur body is doing a great job in South Africa. There's a lot of tournaments, if I look at other countries, a lot more than in other countries. So I think they are, they are bringing up the youngsters nicely and then, you know, with the Sunshine Tour, they can progress. Mm -hmm. The year ahead, how's it looking? The year ahead? Um, good. I'm, I'm very busy this year, uh, trying to play as much as possible in South Africa to support the tour. Uh, but then I'm heading over to Asia for two weeks. In the middle of this stretch, I'll be missing, I think, three Sunshine Ladies Tour events. And after that, I'm going to America, I think, for about six months, so mm -hmm. uh, non-stop. We've also got a very busy schedule in America where we've got, I think, about three majors in, in like six weeks' time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be nice, it'll be interesting. And Liz, how's your 2017 looking? What's planned? Um, it's going to be a bit uh, more quiet because uh, we've got uh, less tournaments in Europe. We're starting only in April, uh, but uh, they're trying to get more tournaments, um, so... Um, Hopefully, uh, I'm going to be a bit busy also. Yeah, there you go. That's where we'll have to leave it. Thank you very much indeed for your time, Thank ladies. You. Thank you. Uh, Leanne Pace, as well as Andres Cardal, uh, well, learning more about the uh, top players in the Sunshine Ladies Tour. Let's uh, take a bit of a break. We'll be back in a short while. Stay tuned. <laughs> Water wise, water is an essential need. The scarcity of it could lead to loss of many lives, including livestock, plants, and much more. It requires us to use it sparingly and responsibly in times of need, failing which our taps and sanitation will not function. For more on water and weather issues, stay tuned to News Today, every Friday at quarter to five Central African time. SABC News, making you water wise. Welcome back to the San Lamia Country Club on the KwaZulu Natal South Coast. And indeed, there's a plethora of talented plays here. And one of them is Lijan Luthwe. Now, she uh, was the runner up in the South African Women's Open back in 2015 and has been in fine form, we are told, ever since. Uh, let's have a bit of a chat with her. Lijan, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank that you. result back in 2015, what sort of impact did it have on your career and you personally? A uh, huge um, impact. Um I think back then I didn't realize the impact that it would have. Um, it was a great way to finish off my amateur career with such a um, momentous and, and yeah, such a big event. Yeah, obviously yeah. turned pro a little while after I'd won, or came second. And um, so yeah, it was the whole new, new era of, of turning professional and, and playing golf professionally. Mm -hmm. Playing as an amateur on a national championship, did it cost you in, in any way? Not at all. Um, 
obviously there's a prize check at the, end of the, at, at the end of the day, but I wasn't worried about that. I was just at the beginning stages of my career. It was more the, the prestigiousness of the event, mm. so to say. Mm. Mm. And um, I was glad that I, was, I stayed amateur for that event. Yeah. Later. How was 2016 for you? Uh, it was brilliant. Um, I obviously finished off the Lady Sunshine Tour. Just missed out on the final to the Chase the Investor Cup. But I'm raring to go this year to hopefully make that top 10. And then um, I went to the, the Ladies European Q School at the end of last year, and mm. that was a, a big experience for me. Mm -hmm. What sort of impact did that um, to have on you? Um, me mentally, it was, it was pretty tough. Um, I definitely think I'll be a stronger, stronger mentally coming from that. So it was a huge learning curve. It's a lot of competitive golf um, continuously over two and a half weeks. And uh, there's no caddy or, or friend there to help you really, it's all on your own and so you really got to battle through and, mm -hmm. and keep yourself motivated. Players are constantly learning all the time, isn't yes. it? When you approach a tournament like this, how do you overcome nerves of, when you, you approach a, a tournament of this magnitude? Uh, look, I don't think you ever overcome nerves. Um, the most nervous I've ever been was actually at the ESA Open final round when I, when I teed it up with Leanne Pace and Kim mm. Williams in the, on the final round. And I actually, I thrived on them. Uh, I think as, when you get better as a player, you learn to thrive on those nerves because I don't think they really go away. Mm -hmm. Would you say you had a sound preparation for the South African Women's Open? For this year or last year? For this, for this year. year. Absolutely. Um, last year, I'd, or S Open 2015, I'd just come um, out of studying. I'd just finished my degree and so I didn't have a lot of preparation at all. Last year, um, I played on the men's, on the IGT tour, which is a mini men's tour, and it, the golf is very competitive. Mm -hmm. So I was playing a lot more competitive golf running into the Sunshine Tour. Mm -hmm. So definitely feeling a bit more confident and, yeah. and with a little bit more experience. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about women golf in South Africa. Do you think women are getting enough recognition? What's some, some of the challenges that <laughs> women in the sport face? Yeah, I definitely don't think we get enough recognition. Um, just, just looking at what what recognition the men's get. It is improving every year. It is um, a slow progress, which is good. Um, but yeah, a little bit more would be great. Mm -hmm. Thanks to CBC obviously hosting this, it, it helps. Every little bit helps. The Sunshine Ladies Tour, is it a priority for you? Absolutely. Um, it's a local tour. Um, you know, this is my home and I obviously want to thrive here and, and carry that going overseas, hopefully. Yeah. What do you think a tour like this does for women in golf? No, it's a, it's a great platform. It's an opportunity to, to play competitive golf and to earn a living. Um, so it, it is, it's a, it's a huge thing. If we didn't have this, a lot of us would be, a lot more of us would be flocking overseas and it's difficult. It's, it's costly and it, it's difficult to travel overseas when you're starting out. In terms of women golf, is the talent pool deep enough here in South Africa? Um, absolutely. It can obviously get better. Um, I think every year that it, it is, we get a, a lot more competitive golfers come through every year. We've got a few international players, some from Sweden, some from, from England as well this year. Uh, we love it. We love it if, if more international players can come. But definitely within the South African girls, the, the talent is getting deeper. A lot more girls are going overseas now. And um, yes, it's, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. yeah. How can it get better though? What, what sort of programs need to be in place? <laughs> Obviously, maybe a bigger local tour with um, a bigger platform to to um, shine, as so to say. I mean, if you look at the main Sunshine Tour, it's, they've got the events that get broadcast on TV, and so to say, and they really get put on a on a platform. And um, having more events here, I think, will will, will help in that mm -hmm. in that regard. <laughs> Um, having more events notwithstanding, do you think the environment though is conducive for uh, women golfers to, to thrive? Absolutely. South Africa is one of the best places in the world to play golf. We have so many talented golf. Thanks to Ernie Els, I mean, Retief Hussain, the guys that, that made South Africa a landmark for, for, for golf all around the world. Mm -hmm. You competed in the Ladies European Tour Sanya Ladies Open. I think you tied uh, 28th there. How was that experience for you? I loved every minute of it. You know, I, didn't, I went into that event not putting any pressure on myself, more to soak in the experience as my first, first event on the European Tour, and I really did. Um, the nerves were pretty high, uh, but I, I dealt with them pretty well, I thought. And leaving there, I knew that that was where I needed to be in the future, mm -hmm. just playing on the, on the European Tour. Mm -hmm. And the caliber overseas compared to South Africa? It's, I think the, the girls of that side obviously have a lot more playing experience because they do get to travel a lot. Um, but I do think that the girls here have just as much talent to succeed. We, when you go over there, you realize that 
they're not that much better, but they have a lot of experience, mm -hmm. and I think that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. When starting out, do you think mm -hmm. the right guidance is key to, to mm -hmm. nurture uh, the, the, the lady that's coming through the ranks? I definitely do think it makes a difference. Um, I've heard of numerous professionals who, who don't have the right guidance, or they take, make one or two wrong decisions, and, and it, takes, it makes an impact on their career. Um, you just got to try and hopefully you're listening to the right people and go with your gut. Mm -hmm. And I think that you should, you should succeed doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for your time, Lijan Lutwig, there, one of the shining stars of the Sunshine Ladies Tour here on the uh, south coast of Quasi Natal, the San Lemire Country Club. Let's take a bit of a break. Lots more to talk about. We'll be back after this. This is Trends, of course, your one-stop serving of all that's juicy and trending in the world of entertainment and showbiz. My name, of course, is Rafael Wemwilo. I'm Dr. Silo Mutaung, and this is our talk. A very good morning and welcome to Media Monitor. I'm your host, Alicia Jolly. My name is Dumila Matez. William Mulebati. My name is Mpo. What time is it? It's question time. For your daily dose of current affairs, tune in to the SABC News Champ. Welcome back. Let's continue our conversation with the shining stars of the Sunshine Ladies Tour. And Ivana Samo joins me now. She is South Africa's former top-ranked amateur who has joined the pro ranks uh, during the IGT Tour. Uh, and that was in November. And folks, she's only 18 years old. Ivana, thank you very much indeed for your time. Good to have you on the program on Sports Live. Firstly, let's take you back. When did you start golf? Um, I started when I was 10 years old, so uh, my dad owned the ball and bucket driving range close to where I stay in Rotopoets and my brother also, he played a lot of golf and he's an older brother so I, I looked up to him and I just wanted to do what he did and as my parents went, as my dad and his buddies and my brother went to the golf course, I had to tag along because like I couldn't, my mom was working so I tagged along and you know I decided while I'm there might as well just start hitting and then um, I took it seriously when I was about 12 and I really started saying okay I want to do this so I was practicing and I really started working hard when I was about 14 and then I played my first international event when I was 16 mm -hmm. so yeah so influenced a lot by family now what's your motivation um, my motivation is to uh, to be honest just to play good golf and to have a lot of fun out there and to become number one in the world and that's that's yeah. my dream I want to become number one in the world and I want to make a mark in ladies golf mm. what do you think about ladies golf what's the what's the current status of, of golf in South Africa with regards to women um, I must say that uh, it's really improving a lot and uh, the pink stick um, Dream Team is also trying to put a lot into there. They're trying to also develop a winter tour. So there's a lot of more events coming up for ladies in South Africa. And internationally, I think the, the standard is very high. And I think that it's great for, for us as South Africans to get the experience in playing in a better tour as our tour is developing all, year after year. So it's great. The Sunshine Ladies Tour, also important uh, tour to get the, the interest in golf again. Um, Sunshine Ladies Tour is obviously also one of the, the steps that you have to take in golf. I mean, for me it was playing, starting off with central cutting golf events and that's when you play with the boys and, you know, obviously tee off your own tees and then, then you went to ladies golf cutting and then I went to women's golf South Africa events and then I started playing international amateur events and so it's, and then I played the IGT tour when I turned pro and that really helped me so much as well. And then Sunshine Ladies Tour is just one of those steps that you have to take in golf. Mm -hmm. 
How's your 2016 been? How's the run-up to the South African Women's Open been for you? Um, well, for the most of 2016, I was an amateur, so I played in the um, the what I played in the in Mexico mm -hmm. for the World Amateur Teams, and it was it was great. And I played with my fellow peer Kaylee Telfer and Cara Gole, and I mean I've made a lot of friends playing on the pro tour and I still keep my friends yeah. from the amateur tour so it's great and it's, lot, it's, a lot, it's a lot of fun being a professional and 2016 was a great year for me as I did turn pro and it was I'm starting my new life. Yeah, That switch between amateur and pro, how was that process for you? It hasn't been a big change to me as like I kind of thought to myself as I could become a professional so it's not like I didn't believe in myself and I didn't thought it was a big change like the practice stayed the same and it's obviously just like the work ethic and there's a lot more concentration while you're practicing because it means more now and um, it's more about the bigger picture hey? so it's more about the 10 years to come and yeah. what I have to do there so yeah when you're approaching tournaments of this magnitude, how do you stay focused as a player? Um, it's just a whole process that uh, I have been trained at GFG Academy with my Graham, with my coach Graham Francis. We we trained a lot about um, staying in the moment and target practicing in my with my mind and all those type of things. So that also helps me staying focused a lot more. Do you normally set goals at the beginning of each season? Uh, yes, yes, I do, and you know, it's also that you have per tournament goals as well. So, and if you don't reach your goals, it just means you must go out there and work harder. Yeah. In terms of your game, what are the, the areas of concern for you? What are you working on for for 2017? Um, well, I I was working on my ball striking mm -hmm. and hitting greens and hitting, making sure hitting the fairways, and that's improved a lot. So now I'm just working around the greens, just making yeah. sure that is all good and sharp. Mm -hmm. Role models, who do you look up to here in South Africa as well as abroad? Um, well, you know, Leanne Pace has always been my role model and she's she's done a lot overseas and everything like that, but now it's like, it's, it's reality to me to see that I'm actually playing against her now mm. and that I can compete to, against her. So, you know, it's, it's really, I love Roy McRoy. <laughs> so yeah. I got to meet him at the S Open, so that was amazing for me. So it was great to see him play, and for me, he's my biggest idol. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about your experiences in Japan, the 2016 uh, World Cup. Yes. How was it for you? Um, that was great. Hey? That was that was a junior event, and it's so much fun because I mean, I travel with my friend Kaylee, and we always go. We've been to like almost every single tour together, so I did grow a close relationship there. And it was the second time we went there. And it was just so much fun, that event, just meeting more people all the time. And, you know, those friends, those people that you meet become friends. Yeah. And, you know, I, now when I go overseas, like, I'll still, I'll greet them and they remember me and we remember each other. So they become friends. And the golf course is really, it's much like this, but not as much water, not as much trees, but it's very much like this. So it's, it's great to get the opportunity to go overseas. And I do thank Women's Golf South Africa for giving me the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Ivana Samu, thank you very much indeed for your time. That's where we'll have to leave it. There you go, a young talent, which I guess bodes well for golf in South Africa. Thank you very much indeed for watching. From us here, from the San Lubia Country Club, it's goodbye for now. Thank you very much there, Blaine Herman speaking to us as you see from San, San Lubia in case of Sports Live at SABC. Dossier does it as we can get all of us at SABC Sports Live. So our Twitter handle. You can also log on to www.sabc.ca.za forward slash news for all the news both locally and internationally at SABC News Online is where you can get hold of them. Now cross over to your world on SABC News Channel 4 for Tabling Watu as well as Lulu Gabua standing by myself and the team. Goodbye.